Thanks for helping me clean out the classroom, Dimitri. I haven't had a second to straighten this place up in a while. Oh, look, it's the Madame Curie Justine made out of string cheese and googly eyes last fall. Yes, it's definitely time for some organizing. No problem, Ms. Reyes. I just love helping you clean. <coughs> Are you sure about that? <coughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> Cleaning's my favorite. <coughs> hmm, an atom and a cell. Dimitri. Why did you put the atom and the cell into different boxes? Because everyone knows living things are made up of cells. Hence, the cell goes into the life science box. And non-living things are made out of atoms. Hence, the atom goes into the physical science box. <laughs> did you, by chance, just learn the word hence? As a matter of fact, I did. Hence, the reason I am using the word hence so frequently. Hold up. Ah, I see you're cleaning up the joint. Thanks for chucking that fuzzy piece of cheddar with the eyeballs. Well, that thing gave me the willies. I just hope you don't make this place too spick and span. Aw, I could never throw you away, Gummerson. Anyway, I heard Mr. Clean over there say that he thinks cells are only in living things and atoms are only in non-living things. Yep, I heard it. Where did that fascinating idea come from? I can tell you how that idea grew. I've got a few ideas on that topic, too. Yo, you can call me Bert. Yo, Bert, I'm Blossom. Yo, now that introductions have been made, can we get back to the issue at hand? Of course. It sounds to me like Dimitri is bouncing around a common misconception that living matter is made up of cells and not atoms, and non-living matter is made up of atoms and not cells. Exactly. So we need to get to the root of this issue, the separation of life sciences and physical sciences. In life science, students are told that cells are the smallest unit of life. But in physical science, those students are told that atoms are the smallest unit of matter. And even though both those statements are true, it doesn't help very much if students don't understand that living things are matter or have any idea of the relative scale of a cell or an atom. <coughs> Seriously, Miss Reyes? You know I love and honor every speck of dirt from which life grows. But, Bella, honey, this dust is a little out of control. Well, it's not like any of you ever RSVP to my classy cleaning party, Evites. <laughs> You're right. I think those we'll went in my spam folder. Now look at this model cell. Typical cell models show just a few components that look like many organs. If only we had another visual aid. This might help. <laughs> you are a dream. Come on, come on, fire up the film. At just a slightly smaller scale, you can see that in reality, cellular components are made up of a huge variety of large molecules. These molecules are made up of atoms and are constantly involved in chemical reactions. But without guidance to help students put different models into a scale framework, Kids just memorize the parts of a cell for their life science test, but are confused if you ask them to explain how a chemical reaction could happen in a cell. That's no shocker. Kids just assume that living things are run by different forces from those that govern non-living matter. Yes, not to mention that life science textbooks include photosynthesis and cellular respiration without the basics of atom rearrangement and conservation. While the physical science textbooks don't always include life science examples when introducing chemical changes, I mean, these are clearly two entities that need to be together, not kept apart. Right, Blossom? Right! If we want them to think differently, we need to take the protein by the bonded atoms and fix this faster than a grease trout on a slip and slide. Yes, Gummerson, and what a stunning metaphor. This perennial problem needs to be pruned pronto. Let's let the visuals roll. 
When students only see this kind of representation, they come away thinking these purple blobby things are proteins, but don't realize that proteins are molecules. Or they think they must be fundamentally different from the molecules they've seen in physical science. Oh, now this one is a little closer to what cells are actually like. Completely made up of molecules. There's nothing better than a flower that knows her facts. They just met. When did they come up with this? I don't know, but I know I don't like it. Listen, we're all bubbling with joy that you two are new best flipping friends, but unless you want to get all gummed up, I suggest that we get back to the point. Fair enough. Gotcha. And the point is, we have to refer to living things as matter made up of atoms and molecules, just like everything else. While you're at it, incorporate language and models of physical science when you're teaching these kids about life sciences. But you also have to use molecular models used in physical science to represent biomolecules like proteins. That way, they'll understand that living matter is made up of atoms and molecules and is governed by the same basic principles as chemical reactions. Hey, you know, you've got a little organic, inorganic thing going on, Gummy. Do not call me Gummy. Anyway, I think it's time I got back to cleaning. Back in the drawer, Albert. I wanted to unwind anyway. Got a mosey, pretty posy. Stay cool, you clever spool. So, what's next? Well, I'm going to make sure my students get their basic physical sciences before teaching them about biochemical reactions. But right now, I think I need to have a quick chat with my cleaning buddy over there. All right, I'm out of here. Good riddance to bad dairy. What should I do with this, Miss Reyes? Um, before we get back to cleaning, let's revisit our cell and atom conversation for a second. You see this? All these blobs are made up of atoms, and atoms make up all matter, including cells. For real? For real. Chemical reactions happen in all living things. So, chemical reactions could happen in a cell, like cellular respiration? Yes. Whoa. <gasps> Check this out. So there must be chemical reactions happening in the mold that's growing on whatever kind of sandwich this used to be, too. Yes! Oh, mm. Speaking of respiration, let's go track down some hazmat suits, Dimitri. Okie dokie. To discover more about how kids learn science and the types of misconceptions they might have, visit us online at scienceeducation.si.edu slash goodthinking.